Hello, my name is Yaga, a natural photographer living in Seattle. Today, I would like to talk about the new filter set released by Shopstar. Traditionally, if we talk about the OSC one-shot color cameras, um, we think it can only do RGB. And when things come to the narrowband photography, we could use some dual dual band uh, narrowband filter like HO. However, because it only has the H and O information, and without the S, it couldn't do the Hubble palette or the SHO color theme, and that limits the capability of the OSC camera by a lot. Although there are some tri-band or um, even quad-band filters, because we cannot really distinguish hydrogen from from sulfur in the red channel, we still couldn't really do. It's just technically infeasible. And recently, Sharpstar released a new filter set consisting of one HO and one SO filter. Personally, I think this is pretty revolutionary because to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time that we could achieve the Hubble palette in an OSC camera, with an OSC camera. And from a marketing perspective, I think this is a pretty smart move because uh, especially for remote observatories, where efficiency is not super high priority, people may just want to spend most of the time doing RGB shooting and sometimes very occasionally doing some SHO so that they could just buy an OSC camera and with those two filters and a very simple, probably in the future, a three, three positional uh, filter wheel. And then they could save a lot of money in the both the camera and the filter set. And in this video, um, I mainly want to talk about how to do post processing of for this filter set. Um, I'm not an expert at all, and uh, most of my technic uh, processing techniques are just for inspirational or reference only. Um, so take a grain of salt when you see check out my video. The general idea of post-processing of this filter set is the HO would have the hydrogen signals embedded in the red channel and the oxygen in both the green and blue. And similarly, the sulfur is in the red channel for the SO filter uh, in the and the green and blue channels contain the oxygen. So what we'll do is we'll first display the RGB channels of both the master uh, integration of both, and then uh, we combine the four channels of R, sorry, of G and B, um, so that we get an integration of O. Um, after that, we do simple SHO, and that's it. That's pretty similar with uh, the monochrome workflow afterwards. So, this is a sample um, integrated exposure by the HO and SO filter. It is actually not from me. Um, it was taken using ZWO AASI 2600 and um, with a ta Takahashi um, Epsilon 160ED. So now we already used the WBPP to um, pre-process all of this and get an integrated image. It is actually in the linear state so we could use STF to realize it. This is how it looks like. Um, surprisingly, they have different green or blue strength. And as we just said before, we will simply use this uh, our split RGB channel feature to split the channels. And for the HO, the R is actually the H, so that we'll rename it here. And then um, we will resave the B and G here. Here we'll use um, O, the first O, O1. And then close it. This will be O2. Similarly, we do channel split, renaming and receiving here. And this is the O3. And this is O4. The reason why we want to save it is uh, there are two possible ways of doing such kind of O integration. The first is we simply do a pixel math with equal weights. 
that's the simplest and fastest way. However, it's possible that different channels may need to have different weights in order to maximize the SNR. Um, that's, the why, that's the reason why another approach, a probably better approach is to use image integration. Uh, and that's exactly what we, what we will use here. So this is the R channel for the SO, so that will be the S. And we can also press Control A to apply STF to figure out uh, what's it like. So this is the H, this is the S, and we'll use the image integration to get the O. So here we simply drag the four O frames into here. And because we only have um, four images, we're not do rejection here. All right, and now we have this integrated image. It is the O channel, so that we could just save it, give it a name of O, and also save this too. Technically, this could be the end of the video because we already got this H, S, and O channels. It's nothing more than the regular monochrome SHO workflow. But here, I just want to give also a um, reference workflow for those who are not really familiar with HSO and so that you could use it as a reference. And here in this specific processing workflow, I made four key decisions, uh, which would change if we we're processing different objects. And the first decision is because this is nebula and we really want to emphasize the texture, the color of the nebula, we decided to do star removal. And the second, decision is we do that before the LRGB combination because um, that will make our stretch more flexible and this will allow us to emphasize the subtle difference among different channels and the color will be also be popped out in this case. And the third is we will use some technique to adjust this these three channels during the combination so that their levels or their luminance will be roughly in the same level before we combine them. And the, four, the fourth is we'll do the fine tune on the color in the Photoshop instead of in pixel sites. That's basically it, so let's do that. The first thing is we'll do star removal. Personally, I'm a fan of Star X Terminator and we can just use it here. And in order to improve the efficiency, I'm a lazy man, we'll use image container here. Um, here, we will go to this, sorry, we should use a uh, views and select all views, add them, drag the triangle icon here in, as an icon, and then tick or large overlap because this is from Newtonian, drag this triangular icon to this image container icon, then it will begin working on processing all the three images at once. All right, then now we have the stars removed. Let's just save the images just in case. Also give this another name of O. And we can still double check, this is still in the linear state. Now we'll do some stretch on them. Personally, sometimes I use this arc sign stretch so that we will give it some initial stretch to an intermediate state. For example, here, we'll estimate the black point and give it some stretch to this state. In a lot of cases, it's just found the preview is not to the best quality. And also this hydrogen channel. We'll still do another round of stretch later, so a little bit difference 
in the luminance is okay and actually expected so now we've finished all the three oh actually this is this as channel not the hydrogen and then we'll use the histogram transform to do some fine tuning here we'll do the H adjust this black level and this curve so that it goes to a reasonable range after that we will do the same for the S so that it could match the background luminance as well as the major part this will make sure that after the final integration or LRGB combination they will have pretty much the same well, level in terms of RG and B and the subtle difference in among different channels would be revealed in this process that looks pretty much the same so what we're doing here is sorry I applied it to the wrong window what we're doing here is we are using the H channel as the reference and adjust the luminance of the other channels to the H I still think this is a bit too dark that looks a bit better all right and also the O channel is just too bright And then we have the three channels here. The next step would be, because this is pretty noisy, we can do a round of um, noise reduction at this time. I'm also a big fan of noise X terminator, so I'll also use it here. And note that we, we don't use image container in this round because different channels have obviously has different signal to noise ratio and we may need different parameters to each channel and there is one thing that i think the s channel has some problems in terms of light pollution for some reason i don't really know um this doesn't look like natural and actually i checked other people's photos online and i believe this is one of the light pollution issue so we'll also use dbe here to correct this light pollution And we can just scatter a few points around this. Probably I should have used this division stuff subtraction. And division will somehow destroy our luminance adjustment it looks okay actually yeah so let's keep that and then we'll use this um, noise x terminator with the noise 0.9 to s because it's the most noisy image and use less aggressive values for the other two All right, then we're ready to do the RGB combination now. We can just put RGB as SHO here and also do chrominance noise reduction. Then this is the SHO image. It's pretty much the final product. We just need to do some fine tuning or tweaking here and there. One of them is we need to do a dynamic crop so that we don't have this black or color gap here. 
probably can do something like this. And as we can see here, we already see the subtle difference in color in different regions. And that's exactly because we adjusted the levels before the RGB combination. And this also has another side effect, a good side effect that for traditional SHU workflow, we usually see is dominated by the hydrogen because it has the most emission. However, in this case, because we already aligned the luminance, it's pretty natural. We don't need to do SENR to remove the grain. And then now what we need to do is just some final curve transform to give it some adjustment here and there. One thing is the overall white balance, although we'll do more fine tuning in, the, in Photoshop because it has more, more control or knobs to tweak, we'll still do some basic fixing here. Otherwise, our later um, color adjustment won't be accurate. And here's the trick of adjusting the hue curve. We first click to add some anchors so that if you drag one anchor, it won't impact others. Now we are able to just drag different colors and adjust their hue accordingly. It's very subjective. So adjust the saturation a little bit. He still looks a bit weird. This is better. And also the curve of luminance. There are actually more details here in the dark region. And for the sake of this video, it won't work too much to extract them. I already did some experiments that this specific um, image doesn't benefit too much from having a synthetic L channel. So that's the reason why we didn't do that right now. But that's totally object or actually photo specific so this is our nearly final product let's give it a name SHO and we'll also save it as a uh, TIFF file so that we could further edit it in Photoshop and whoop sorry we need to make it a 16-bit integer otherwise Photoshop won't be able to recognize it This is it. We do three things in Photoshop. One is the color balance. One is uh, saturation adjustment, and one is curve. For the color balance, we are usually begin from the shadows because that'll give us a neutral tone for the background. We we want perfect black background instead of say purple or green. And then I start from highlights because it's more like colorization instead of um, white balance for this specific step. Again, this is very subjective. And we can see the before and after. For the, key, for the hue and the saturation, we can use Shortcuts like Alt plus 3 to go to the reds. And 4 is the yellow and so on. This will all save us some time. Green. For the blue. We could also do some adjustment on this. Brightness. Magenta. 
Don't really like magenta in the background. All right. Then finally, the curves. We already adjusted the curve a lot in the pixing side, so here is mostly some fine tuning. That's it. Save it. Then that will be pretty much our process results. So if we take a look at what we have done, we first extract RGB channels from the HO and SO, use the red channel in the HO as the H, the red channel in the SO as the S, and do image integration of the four channels, the R and B channels of both images to get a no channel. Then this is just traditional um, SHO processing workflow. A unique workflow I suggest here for this specific object is we could adjust the S, S, H, and O channels luminance to roughly the same level so that the product combination, combined image, would have the subtle color difference popped out. That's it. This is the reference workflow um, I provided and hope you are getting some inspiration from it. Thank you.